Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another review. This is another paid request, this time for Jonathan Lindsay. Thank you so much for being so generous. I really appreciate it, Jonathan. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for another episode of Batman the Animated Series, and it's for Avatar. Which, they had to have been doing an ode to Indiana Jones, especially Raiders of the Lost Ark. Because there's moments here that definitely made me think of that, in a good way. But there's an archaeology dig. I like the direction where this is all played with music and not really any sound effects. Especially when the guy goes in and then there's this green light and people are taking the rope up and they see the rope is burned and the guy disappear. It's all done with music. I thought that was an interesting, unique choice. There's really no sound effects. So it's sometime later and this treasure of the pharaoh is going to open up and someone tries to steal the scroll. Batman stops him and realizes it's people that worked for Ra's al Ghul played by David Warner, which is, a, like I said before, is a very good choice for this character. David Warner is a good actor. He was in The Island with Michael Caine. He was in Waxwork. He's been in a lot of other films. A good actor. And Batman gets bitten by this snake, Egyptian Cobra. And like Batman, he has Eddie Cure that he can get his hands on. That's tendency. He's able to thankfully cure himself. But then he goes on this journey, and like when he goes on the journey, and it goes to this map, and you see sort of the plane ride, that is just like in Raiders of the Lost Ark, when they would go to a map, and you see the tra trajectory where it's going. I'm like, okay, there's got to be some type of Indiana Jones influence on this. Same with, okay, he meets Talia, who's the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, and then they go to Cairo. Uh, there's even a bit where Batman's talking with Ra's al Ghul, who's like doing this because, oh, this person has a, this will lead to a weapon that as like sounds like what the Nazis wanted from the art in Raiders of the Lost Art, that'd be this weapon. And Batman says, you sound like a, a Saturday afternoon serial. Which Indiana Jones were based on the afternoon serials. These even been where Batman pushes on a statue, kind of like Indiana Jones did, but that was so that him and Marion could get out of the snake pit, and Indiana Jones pushes that statue off. Well, Batman does the same thing near the end of the episode, and I'm like, again, I, am I seeing things or there has, which is a good thing because I love Indiana Jones. It's not a bad thing at all, but it's like, there's got to be something to this. I know they got a 4K set. I haven't looked into it. But uh, overall, I didn't mind this episode. I like the change of location, the Cairo. I like the whole, I'm a sucker for Indiana Jones type of adventure stuff. They go into a crypt. The green glow is like this woman who's like a mummy zombie soul sucker. Try to suck up David Warner's soul. And there's not a whole lot of fighting. I mean, there's a little bit before where Bruce Wayne and Tally get trapped in this glass thing. And Bruce just happens to have some device to shatter the glass. And he's in his normal clothes. I don't know how he fit that in his normal clothes. But he, he happened to fit in his normal clothes. And thankfully he's got the device to shatter the glass. And he's got a device for every occasion. But the green glow, like even before they went down the crypt, you have like the wind and sand blown into the hole to the crypt, and they have a nice bit of atmosphere to the episode. There's some nice bits of lighting, like Batman in the shadow, and you just see a silhouette. The the cartoon, Batman and Mr. did a lot of great stuff with lighting and shadow, similar to what Fleischer would do back in the day with the Superman cartoons. So... It's one of the nice attributes of the show. I like that the... It's not only a mummy zombie type, but she also has these green blob creatures. And Batman just happens to have a grenade. I didn't... Throws it. 
Now, there's not a lot of room to have, like, a fist-to-tough fight with this creature, because if you get near it, it'll suck out your soul. But, I think he's able to push the statue, kind of like what I think Indiana Jones did. And, uh, but again, that was, that was the idea, that, like I said before, that's where, spoiler alert, he pushes it, and then able to make the whole thing collapse, and then they escape. And Talia, despite all the things that have happened, she still loves her dad, so tells Batman, go over there. And I guess one of them, as a sign of respect for help save their lives, throws some water down. Until next time. Yeah, next time. And Batman gets the water and walks away, because what more can he do? So, I mean, it was, you know, not one of my favorites. Mine is more of the action-heavy, fight-heavy episodes. I'm a sucker for that. Not always. That's not always the case, to be fair. There's others that were not, but I really enjoyed. Um, I don't know how you would do it, but... I, yeah, Bruce and Talia does have a fight where they fight some thugs in Cairo, to be fair. I just, I meant in the finale, I wish there was a way for... I don't know if these blob creatures, Batman could fight them, because they turn... I don't know how you would work that, though. Because I just thought they defeated the villain fairly easily. Just they run off, push a statue, collapses the end. So I guess maybe something a bit more extravagant than that. I don't know how. But other than that, I like the Indiana Jones feel to it. I like the atmosphere of the crypt and the green glow. And like I said, the direction at the beginning. David Ward is always nice to hear him. He's a good voice actor as well as regular actor. He works well for Ra's al Ghul. You always have that interesting thing where Batman loves Talia and Talia loves him. But she also loves her father as well, so there's that dichotomy of, I love you, I don't want you hurt, but I love my father, I don't want him hurt either. So she's stuck between these two worlds. So, it's why Batman can't get the bad guy, but he won't be killed as well. And overall, it was an interesting episode. Like I said, I like the change of venue, the change of location. So, it's not just... Gotham, you know, there are other places in the world in this universe. And uh, overall, I didn't mind it. Didn't mind it at all. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you in the next video. Later.